So uh, thanks for coming. And uh, we got I counted like 70 or 80 people here, which is which is really great. And I'm glad a lot of industries here so they could hear a lot of this stuff because a lot of the things that we talk talk to you about is really going to be feedback for you to go back to your labs and, and make whatever you have better. So I'm going to talk, uh, my, my talk is on uh, fluoroscopic kind of navigation, but uh, we're going to call it, uh, for the purposes of this talk, AI tomography with augmented fluoroscopic navigation, real-time modalities for peripheral bronchoscopy. And you're going to understand why I included all these words instead of just calling it fluoroscopic navigation. So I don't know if any of you are in the room are old enough to remember th this, you know, classic album, the Jimi Hendrix experience, right? Are you experienced? So we're going to do my version. We're going to call it the lung vision experience, okay? I told you you'd like that, right? So uh, the, uh, here's the obligatory uh, COI slide. So really not a lot of uh, conflict of interest when it comes to this. So what are the challenges when it comes to no nodule biopsy? Uh, uh, nodule biopsy, we've been hearing about that for today. You're going to be hearing about it tomorrow. You're going to be hearing about it whenever you come to talks about nodules now. Right? And, and really, it's the, it's, you have to overcome CT to body divergence, uh, real-time confirmation of tool and lesion, which, which me personally is my bias. I think that's the most important uh, aspect of things. Uh, obviously, manageable cost of added equipment, and you want to keep your space footprint low. Because, you know, we all have Bronx suites, and they're all a fixed size. And the more equipment, the more crap you put in there, the less room you have for yourself and your staff and everything. So. So you want to kind of keep this in mind, too, as you're moving forward, thinking about what technology you're going to buy. Uh, tool deflection, obviously, is a, you know, it's a problem, right? Especially with plastic catheters. Plastic catheters uh, uh, have a deflection. You put a tool in it, and it deflects differently. We hear all about atelectasis. If you come to my year in review talk tomorrow, you hear a little bit more about how atelectasis develops during uh, bronchoscopy. And then there's the nodule movements, right? So this, where the nodule is at the time of the CT is not really where the nodule is at the time of your procedure, right? And this nice little study by Mike Pritchett a few years ago, depending on where that nodule was, whether it be in the upper lobes or lower lobes, you could have quite a bit of deflection uh, or registration difference between where you were or where you think you are and where you actually are in terms of where the nodule is. A really elegant study by Mike Pritchett again using his cone beam CT, um, which looks at, uh, <clears throat> let's see if I can point this out for you, the, uh, the, the red ball is where you thought it was, the blue ball based on cone beam CT is where it is, and uh, this purple area is your region of overlap per se. And you can see before co any corrections were made, right, with standard EM navigation, right, you could see that, that almost three quarters or actually two thirds, a little more than two thirds of the nodules had barely any overlap. So you're aiming at something that actually really wasn't in front of you. However, once corrections were made, um, you could uh, improve that overlap to maybe a more manageable, uh, man maybe a more manageable level. Remember, the more overlap there is, the better you are at targeting. So let's kind of segue then into lung vision, which is really what we're, we're talking about here during this uh, fluoroscopic navigation talk. Um, I prefer to use the term augmented imaging. It's not really fluoronav, right? It's really augmented imaging. When augmented imaging really just refers to any real-time imaging uh, that's being augmented by some other imaging source. So fluoroscopy being augmented by CT, fluoroscopy being augmented by ultrasound, whatever it is. Um, it doesn't matter how many image sources you have. It, the, the, the important thing is they're being fused, okay? The imaging sources could be real-time, they could be historic, but really augmentation needs to happen in real-time for it to be called augmented imaging. So what really lung vision is, it's an augmented image-guided navigation that happens in real-time. It combines catheter tracking, which we saw a little bit before, with image fusion, and it utilizes some AI to adjust for divergence. And then, separate from that, it's followed by augmented image-guided biopsy. We're going to go through that whole thing. So the real-time augmented imaging is, like I said, you were using multiple imaging sources simultaneously to guide your target to the catheter. We use computer vision, which sort of, comp which in essence, compensates for dynamic anatomic variability. Okay, so patients not sitting the same way they were when they had their CT, lungs are moving during respiration, so on and so forth. There's machine learning that goes on, so it allows for the robust, increasing robustness of the procedure by looking at what we did historically and incorporating that into, the, into better algorithms, okay? It uses cloud computing, so you, this doesn't use my information historically, it uses everybody's information that makes the algorithm better as you go along. 
So they in incorporate all these technologies to try to make what we're doing better. <clears throat> here's a typical setup, okay? Here's our, here's a Bronx setup. The uh, lung vision basically is a tablet, it's a board, it's a router that sends stuff to the cloud, and it's the main unit. And that's it. That's everything, okay? So there's your, uh, there's your screen, it's on a little stand. There's my board. I get that image on my screen. There's my, uh, there's my main unit with the router on top of it. There's my uh, bronchoscope with the lung vision catheter in it. There's a little bit of the catheter itself. And there's my C-arm, which I already have. Lung vision works with any C-arm. Okay, as long as it's digital, works with anything. Nine inch detector, 12 inch detector, Siemens, Philips, doesn't matter, works with all of them. I think that's important because you don't, have, you don't want to have to buy a, or borrow some, some C-arm that you don't already have in your suite. Bottom line is, is that, is that lung vision works with everything you already have. Nothing extra. Um, so what is the process? What's the workflow? Very easy. You plan. I'll go through that. Um, uh, you, you just identify the nodule. You segment it like you would with anything else. You do some registration. Registration, pretty simple. Just rib borders and three planes, main carina and then the nodule, and then you do your procedure, and we'll go through all these. Uh, here's the planning. Um, let me go through these first because uh, of how this operates. Okay, so you'll identify the lesion. Is, it is the video playing? There we go. Okay, no, I got it. I'll do it from here. So you identify the lesion. You choose the lobe, right, that the lesion's in. You mark the center of the nodule. You segment the nodule. You identify the airway. You're done with planning, okay? I'll run through this and then we'll go to the next slide. As you can see, I'm marking the center of the nodule. Um, and then next, I'm going to start segmenting the, the, the nodule, okay? Just like you would on any other kind of system, cone beam system. However, you get your airways, you identify the airway that's going to take you to the nodule or take you closest to the nodule. Um, pretty simple, okay? Uh, I just planned in 30 seconds. Okay, next. Then you do a main carina registration, right? So you, uh, you get your C-arm, you spin it from 30 to 30, now we're spinning it 50 to 50, sometimes we're even spinning it 70 to 70 uh, for better imaging. But regardless, uh, you find your main carina, you, after your spin, you find your main carina on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the spin, you drag and mark them, okay? So you register the main carina. Pretty simple, it's gonna happen in about 30 seconds. The video is running a little slow, it usually happens a little bit quicker. <clears throat> but you can see what I'm doing here, right? I hope, I hope the main carina projects pretty well. You can see main carina, main carina, CT. This is during the procedure, okay? Then we do a C-arm spin to identify where the nodule is, okay? So again, we do the C-arm spin. We mark the center of the nodule on the CT. Mark the nodule on the center of the, of the CABT, right? Which is uh, basically C-arm-based tomography. I think I got that right. We just call it CABT. Okay, and there you go. There's the nodule over here. I just found the nodule. I've now registered both, and there we are. Okay, and then we're ready for the procedure. All right, then we'll navigate. This video looks familiar, right? Uh, so I don't think I have to show that since we already saw it. And then once you get out there, you can actually do a CBT spin just to make sure that your tool, your catheter is at the lesion, right? So uh, you could see I, I, did, I did a separate spin. I, I, let me see if the video will play. Yep, there you go. So there's my catheter. Obviously, there's my lesion. There's my lesion. You can see I'm sitting right at it. If I want to reconstruct it in three dimensions that I could spin it around, I could do that too, okay? So now I know that my, 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 my catheter is right at the nodule, okay, in real time, okay? And then the biopsy's done, and I don't, I don't think I have to show you the biopsy. We, uh, we've already seen that before. Okay. Well, the, uh, I think the second rule of meta is, uh, or maybe I should call it the second commandment of a tool meta, is if you didn't publish it, it didn't happen, right? Well, he's nodding his head. I listen and I remember. So where's the data? Okay, well, there's two studies right now. Both studies were done on old versions of the software, so let me just remind you of that. It was before we had CABT, so this is where we just had the yellow ball, the, the augmented pathway, and that's it, okay? So uh, one, uh, one is from Mike Pritchett's group, and we, uh, and, uh, let me go through this real quick. He did, uh, he did his uh, navigations and procedures with cone beam, 
all right? So he navigated and then did a cone beam spin to make sure that the catheter is where we thought it would be. It basically just took a cone beam image, took the CABT, CABT image, which is more or less a cone beam image, and he correlated the two, okay? And you can see that he had, whoop, sorry about that. He had a 94% localization, okay? Diagnostic yield of around 77%, okay? This is our study from the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, it was a multi-center, so it was us and several other centers, Chicago, uh, Nebraska, a whole, whole bunch of places. Uh, we had 55 patients, again, early on in the technology, 55 patients. We had a 93% uh, uh, localization, and we had an overall 75% diagnostic yield, which, of course, um, localization rates uh, went up as the lot nodule got bigger, and uh, as, did, uh, as did yield. Okay? So, look, I said we did those early studies before we had any of the newer stuff, the CABT spins and, and, and really good, robust, real-time real -time, uh, uh, imaging. And you can see the timeline, though, has been pretty quick. Companies moved forward pretty, pretty fast. And uh, there's some new things on the, coming down the pike. Before I get into that, let me tell you a little bit more about the procedures. Jaspal Singh said this morning, time is money for him, okay? So you, you certainly don't want to bring in a new technology into your suite that takes you two and a half hours to use to get a yield. When you could use something else, it takes you 30 minutes. Now, you know, the, obviously those are extremes. But in our last 80 cases at the Cleveland Clinic, we have a total procedure time of about 54 minutes, okay? From scope in to biopsy, okay? And that includes several rounds of rows. Um, the multi-center trial is 41 minutes. Mike using his C is using his cone beam, 47 minutes. So it's all around 50, 55 minutes, okay? And the more you do, the better you get. The radiation dose also super small. Um, uh, the multi-center trial, 248.7 milligray was the average. Remember, cardiac cath is 10, almost 10 times that. So everybody complains and said, oh, you're using so much fluoroscopy. You're not, you're really not. Uh, you're using way less than what the cardiologists are using. Uh, 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 Badra's study, again, same thing. He, he used uh, 2.7 millisieverts, one-fifth of, of what they're doing in the cath lab. The cost, look, the cost, the, the cost is low because you don't need an EM, an, a, you know, an electromagnetic catheter, right? You, you don't have any sensors. So that goes out the window. You could use whatever uh, working guide, working channel you want. So there's some cost benefit there that you don't have with some of the other, with the robots, which, right, which have recurrent costs. And, and uh, uh, you know, the, their catheter is about half the price of everything else on the market. And then convenience, like I showed you, small space footprint used with any C-arm. So I, I think there's some advantages here to this. Um, but, you know, you'll have to make those judgments for yourself. What's the future? Well, there's AI TOMO, so there's C-arm-based tomography, but there's, there's a new tomography that's out that could actually make you spin this in many different directions if you'd like to, just like you would on CT. Um, here's a great example of it. I won't go, you know, how am I on time? Am I good? Two minutes? Okay, good, I'll finish. Good. This is the uh, AI TOMO, which sort of is done the same way that CABT is, but instead, you could, you could spin this image in any direction you want here to kind of tell you where you are. It's actually really super slick. Um, and it really mimics, I think, what some of the, some of the C, uh, cone beam technologies that we have on the market now. Maybe not as uh, crisp on the image, but close. Good enough. Um, this is a case uh, from, uh, from Chicago. This is incorporating the robot with lung vision. Wow. Basically using the robot to navigate out to the nodule and then using the real-time guidance, right, that we have with lung vision to incorporate both. Because remember, the robot uses old standard nav EM navigation, okay? So if the EM navigation wasn't good with old SuperD, right, it's not going to be any good or it's gonna, not going to be any better with the new stuff, the, all right? So uh, Kyle started using this and it's, you know, We've used uh, our hybrid scopes with this instead of the catheter. Um, and we're, we intend on using our robots with this too. Um, again, another case where Kyle used a robot to help out. And not in all cases, just in cases where it's challenging. Uh, here's a case uh, from Kyle that I believe was this week. And uh, he gave me these He actually gave me a video. I just took some stills because there was some, there was some language behind the, uh, the video that I just, I was just afraid. <laughs> Uh, he said, oh, just play it on mute. And I was just afraid that it wouldn't play on mute. So we'll just leave it at the stills. Yeah, I know. You're back there and you know. Okay. Uh, so this is a case he did. And let me just point things out here. The Monarch, using, using um, 
old EM navigation said he was 21 millimeters from the center. But clearly, here's the uh, EBUS probe out. He's got a nice image. He's at the lesion. Clearly, this is more, I mean, this is a inner space and a half. So he's out, he's out super far. He's out way more than 20 millimeters, right? So, um, uh, so clearly, there was some navigation error here, okay? Uh, which he overcame by combining the two. Because, because, because the guidance and the real-time guidance and the ability to image tool in lesion is what's most important here. Um, and I think that as we see the technologies evolve, as you work in your, uh, as you work in your suites, as more people do cone beam CT, this is what they're going to tell you, and we're seeing it in real life. So um, to summarize, uh, lung vision moves away from these traditional EM navigational platforms and focuses more on real-time imaging, which I think is the key to any nodule biopsy that we do. Why are, why are the IR guys so good? Why, are there, why is their outcomes and their yield so high? because they could see needle in nodule. They could see needle in lesion, okay? And, and we're starting to be able to do that. So whereas maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, it was a pipe dream to get these kind of yields that the IR, the TTNA guys did, I think we're approaching that now. And it's because we're moving towards real-time image guidance. The lung vision combines features of image-guided navigation, right, with image fusion in real time, imaging to provide high-quality localization biopsy nodules, right? Experience across several centers demonstrates sustained localization. So it wasn't just us at the Cleveland Clinic, you know, it was, it was everywhere. And our, 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 uh, uh, our multi center site included places that were com community centers, 100% community centers. So anybody could do it and have the same success as a big center. Uh, the cost per procedure pro profile is, I think, is right now is, is, is unmatched for now. And, but look, we need to do more work and experience, and, and the technology continues to evolve and get better and better. So we're kind of looking forward to the, to the future. Am I at 15? So look, I'm just going to end with this. It's, 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 the, um, it's the lung vision Uber strategy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of take lung vision and tell you how it exactly mimics the, uh, the Uber strategy, right? So Uber connected customers with underutilized, unused resources, right? The cars and drivers, integrating technology that was being used for other things, GPS, smartphones, data messaging. And Uber developed algorithms and software to connect all these existing technologies that were separated in the past. And the end result was that they connected the customer with the resource in a cost-effective and very efficient way. And it's exactly what Lung Vision does. It connects the customer, me and you, with the underutilized equipment, you know, CT, fluoroscopy, your bronchoscope, to create an efficient and cost-effective workflow. So they network underutilized equipment and tools using advanced software algorithms. They create a synergy which provides, these, provides outcomes that are more cost-effective, more efficient. So um, we'll, we'll, Fabian's going to talk next. I'm going to stop here. We'll answer questions later. So thank you very much. I encourage you to come to my year in review tomorrow. We'll, We'll look at all of these technologies together. All right, thanks. That lesion. Take one more question. So. Every day, so this is not necessarily. Um, I just added this one slide at the last.